All right. We've all seen the hate. We've all seen people bagging on the low-carb diet simply because, well, honestly, they're misinformed. So the whole idea of this video is just to lay down the law with science. I'm putting aside personal biases. I'm putting aside anything. I'm putting aside the fact that I've lost 100 pounds leveraging mostly fasting and a low-carb lifestyle. And I'm here to talk about just the scholarly articles and the university studies and the peer-reviewed research that breaks down the effectiveness of a low-carb diet versus a low-fat diet. So bear with me. If you don't like science, it probably isn't the video for you. So let's get straight on to it. I'm going to break this down into three-month studies, six-month studies, 12-month studies, and two-year-plus studies. And then I'm going to actually be honest with you, and I'm going to give you the negative implications of a low-carb diet. Why? Because I want to break this down with honesty. I want to give you the science, but I also want to give you the cold hard facts. There are some negative things that come along with a low-carb diet that you need to be cognizant of. So without further ado, let's get down to the first three-month study. This first one was published in Diabetic Medicine in 2006. And what it looked at was a very large group of overweight patients. Okay? These particular patients were diabetic. And they put half of them on a low-carb diet, and they put half of them on a low-fat diet. And what they wanted to measure was overall their weight loss, but they wanted to look at a couple of other things that were pertaining to diabetes. Well, what they found is after three months, the low-carb group lost on average 7.8 pounds, and the low-fat group lost on average just two pounds. Okay, that's just weight, not a huge deal. We have to look at some other biomarkers. But there's actually one more study that diabetic medicine did in 2007 that took a look at a few more people. This one took a look at 13 obese and 13 non-obese patients, and wanted to compare low carb versus low fat. Well, after three months, what did they find again? They found this time, on average, the low carb patients lost 15.2 pounds versus 4.6 on the low fat. Now, again, this is a three month study, which means we're not gonna see the long tail results of really the triglyceride levels, the cholesterol levels, and all that stuff, but we are gonna start to see the immediate weight loss. And that's pretty darn awesome. But I know that a lot of the rebuttals are going to come back and say, well, what about cholesterol? If I had a dollar for every person when I talk about ketosis or low carb that says, I'd like to see the insides of your arteries, or I'd like to see your blood measurements, or I'd like to see your cholesterol levels, I would probably be able to at least like buy a nice set of dumbbells because a lot of people do say that. Okay, this first six month study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It took a look at 132 different people. Okay, it took a look at obese and non-obese, but mostly at least overweight patients. And they were measuring like a number of things. Of course, they were looking at the weight loss again, and they were also looking at the overall triglycerides and looking at the cholesterol levels, which is where this starts to get pretty interesting. Well, of course, when it came down to the weight loss, again, we saw that the low carb group lost 12.8 pounds versus the other group only losing about eight. So when it comes down to triglycerides, which are basically our fat storage building blocks, this is where the results got interesting. The low carb group had a reduction of 38 milligrams per deciliter of triglycerides versus the low fat group only had seven. Okay, now let's talk about insulin. 27% reduction in insulin levels in the low carb group versus the low fat group. Now, you might be saying, of course it's gonna be lower levels of insulin. You know, they're not having carbohydrates, so of course their insulin is gonna be lower. But let's think about something for a second. What is the main contributor to cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis? Well, it's not saturated fats, it's inflammation that they've kind of linked with saturated fats in some wraparound ways. It's inflammation that's critical. When we start having higher levels of inflammation, there is a direct line item correlation with inflammation. Okay, now enough of that. What also improved was the fasting glucose, down 26 points. Again, you're probably saying, well, of course fasting glucose is gonna be down because this is simply a low carb diet versus a low fat diet. But these numbers remained even after consuming carbohydrates later on, meaning that the fasting glucose levels naturally just evolved and changed, even if they were not diabetic. All right, now let's get into another study from the six month spectrum. This study was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. This one looked at females. Why did I pick this study? Because there are a couple comments in particular that said, well, only men really have success with low carb diets because they were trying to couple it with different hormones, couple it with testosterone and things like that. Not the case. In fact, this study took a look at 53 overweight women. And what, again, they were measuring the weight loss. Well, not only did the women see an 18 pound on average weight loss versus a nine or 10 pound weight loss with the low fat, there were huge, huge reductions in triglyceride levels, massive improvements in their HDL levels, and massive reductions in their LDL levels. So we really end up having some pretty significant results there. Not to mention, there is an added side effect of lower blood pressure too. Really not a bad thing in the grand scheme of things, right? 
But that's just six months. Who really cares about six months? Let's talk about 12 months. Let's talk about what can happen after a full year of doing this stuff. Well, there's a study that was published in the journal American Medical Association, which is one of the top journals out there, a journal that a lot of physicians reference, and quite honestly, a journal that a lot of other journals look up to when it comes down to cold hard facts. Well, this study was big. This study took a look at 311 participants, all of them overweight, but again, comparing low carb, but this time comparing low carb to low fat in three different ways. Why did they do this? Because it'd be easy to say that the low fat diet could have been influenced by the types of carbs they were consuming. And that's rightfully so, that very much so is true. So by doing this, they said, okay, we're gonna have low glycemic, medium glycemic, and high glycemic carbs on the low fat spectrum, and we're just gonna go general low carb for that idea. Well, they still found after all of that, that the low carb prevailed, not only for weight loss again, but this time massive reductions in blood pressure, huge improvements again in triglycerides after a year, continuing on, and then massive, massive increase in HDL, and again, a reduction in LDL. Why do I say this? Simply because that is where everyone tries to combat a low carb diet, saying that cholesterol levels are gonna go through the roof. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I don't really care about cholesterol levels all that much. I do if they're out of control, but we know that the biggest problem is oxidized cholesterol. Cholesterol, when it gets oxidized and it turns into an issue with lipid peroxidation and causes, what do you know, inflammation. So with that being said, let's roll right into the two-year study that took a look at the Annals of Internal Medicine, which compiled a lot of different studies, and they found after two years, almost identical results to what happened after one year. So the results stayed the same and continued on. Now, there are a lot of long tail studies that are continuing on. Okay, these long tail studies are looking at uh, all of the people that started doing the Atkins diet. Okay, all these people were doing the Atkins diet in the 70s and 80s, and they're starting to become the people now that would normally start to develop heart issues and other issues. Well, guess what? We're finding that there is a decrease in those instances, especially when they're queried on what kind of lifestyle they were living earlier in their life. You see, now we're reaching a point where the people that are getting older and normally having to go on Medicare or anything like that are the people that were starting to be a result of the health boom that was starting to sort of combat the low fat boom. So it's kind of interesting to see that things are actually improving. It's not as much of an epidemic as we think when it comes down to the low carb, high fat world. Okay, now I have to be honest with you. Let me talk about some of the negative implications of low carb dieting really quick so that you have the honest truth, okay? The first one is simply going to be minerals. You flat out don't get the same minerals. That's a given, simply because you're not retaining as much water. And I've talked about this in a lot of videos. So what ends up happening? People can have cardiovascular issues because they're not modulating their potassium and magnesium levels. They're also not watching their sodium levels. They're getting dehydrated, it's throwing their body off, and they're not getting the right minerals. So cardiovascular issues and tachycardio issues and neuro issues can occur if your fats aren't in line and you're not making sure you get the right minerals in. So I do want to make sure that you're clear on that. Okay, the next one is going to be mood issues, depression, things like that. It's common, okay? It's very, very common. And why? It simply has to do with tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid. Amino acids are building blocks of proteins. But tryptophan is activated and entered into the brain by insulin. And unfortunately, take the good with the bad of the low-carb diet, when you're having no carbohydrates, you have very little or no insulin allowing the tryptophan to get into your noggin. If that tryptophan doesn't get into your noggin, it can't activate serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter that helps you feel good. It also helps you sleep because it converts into melatonin later on down the line. How do you combat this? Carbs every once in a while, or make sure that you're at least taking tryptophan, or make sure that you're at least getting enough sleep so that your body can recover and be a little bit more receptive to the lower amounts of insulin that you do consume. Then lastly, we have to deal with dehydration, which ties right in with minerals, and that can be a big issue. You're not getting the water, your liver can't function right, your liver can't metabolize fats, your liver really has a hard time, it's a lot of strain on your kidneys. There are some things that go along with a low carb diet, but also we have to factor in the bad breath. If you're going in ketosis, yes, you will have keto breath, but it only lasts a small amount of time. It goes away with time. It goes away once your body becomes adapted to utilizing fats as a source of fuel. So don't be afraid of low carbing just because of that. The last thing I wanted you to do was be afraid of low carb diets when it had to do with science. I broke this down for you. I chopped up all the myths that are out there regarding it. And I think that this is enough for you to decide whether or not it's for you. I'm not telling you one way is right or wrong, but I am giving you the facts. And as always, if you have ideas or if you have questions or concerns about this video, hit them in the comment section below. I'm happy to help you out. I'm happy to lay down the law and I'm happy to produce more videos that talk about this topic. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.